I'm moving. I guess just uh, right, first thing to come to mind when you just saw the bracket last night and how things shaped out. Well, our guys were excited, you know. Um, you know, to uh, be at the point where we're at right now, we're opportunity to continue to play. You know, we've played pretty good basketball over the last six or seven weeks. Um, you know, throughout the year, you know, one of the, the they had the two main indexes at the end of the season. Uh, one ad is playing the third toughest schedule in the country. One ad is playing the 24th. Uh, for us to have 19 wins and have the opportunity, you know, going through that type of schedule to play in the postseason, our guys are excited. I, you know, not going to sugarcoat it. Wish we were playing, you know, had an opportunity. And I think you saw even through some of the shows last night, we were in the mix, you know, a game or two probably out of it. But um, our guys are excited to continue to play, especially our seniors. And to play another home game is something special as well. Uh, we've played well at home, uh, playing against a very good team. You know, the, the one thing is, with the way the, the brackets are in both the NCAA and the NIT, um, with the automatic qualifiers and so forth, there was only about 40 some spots open for teams that didn't win their conference championship to play in the postseason. And we got what we have one of those. And, and uh, there's a lot of good teams playing in the, in the NIT that were, you know, uh, hoping to play in the NCAA. And so now you got to go out there and compete. What does it mean for the seniors who have been through so much during their careers here at Tech to play in the postseason? Well, I think it means a lot to them, you know. Um, you know, we were all disappointed. We ran into a very good team, obviously, Virginia, number one seed. Uh, you know, you look at the NCAA tournament, and we played two number one seeds and a number two seed in Villanova. Uh, you know, we got beat by a better team on that night. You know, the first time we played them, we were better than they were. Second time, they were better than us. Uh, but you got to move forward, and, and I think our seniors are excited about playing and continuing their career with the opportunity to win a few more games. This Houston team is not five slam a jamma, but they've won some big games this year. They've beaten UConn, Temple, Cincinnati, Tulsa, some some really good teams. Yeah, they're they're really good. Um, you know, Kelvin and I have a long-standing relationship. We both come from the same family tree in terms of coaching. He was one of Judd's assistants a long, long time ago. We've known each other for a long time, and I've been an assistant playing against his teams at Washington State and at Oklahoma. Uh, one of the best coaches in college basketball. Um, just does a great job, and, and he's done a great job there. Uh, they're the leading, they lead the league in, in scoring. They have the leading scorer who comes off the bench for them. Um, they're very, very talented, long, athletic, great guard play, play fast. Um, it's going to be a great test for us. You mentioned the disappointment not making the NCAA, but I guess maybe the silver lining is playing at home. You're looking for that home crowd to get behind you. And yeah, you know, and that's a good point. We've had unbelievable home crowds this year. You know, it's, it, we've had a four-game winning streak right now with Wake Forest, Notre Dame, Clemson, and Pittsburgh. The crowds in all four of those games were, were great. Um, and just hope that they come out again and, and support, the, especially the seniors. Uh, but they've been great all year long, and, and hopefully we'll get a good crowd for the game. They, they use a three-guard. Uh, offense. Does that make it easier for you to match up for the, the players you have? They're a tough matchup. No matter, you know, they they they've been able to play big, you know, with, with great length inside, but also you know go smaller with a smaller lineup, and and uh, you know yet they have great flexibility with that. So when when they're small, we're going to have to do a really good job of of guarding the dribble and guarding the dribble penetration and guarding the three. Um, you know, like I said, it's it. You know, and with the two-day prep with the team you haven't really seen all year long, it's going to be a great challenge for us. Is there some value in that, something to look forward to? You talk about the team you haven't seen and so forth, but after two-plus months and 19 straight ACC opponents, is there a sense of relief and almost a joy to get the heck out of the ACC and play somebody <laughs> yeah. else? Well, you know, I mean, what, what we finished in the ACC, 9 and 11 in the 20 games, and, uh, you know, I think, 12 of those games were against teams in the top 30 in the RPI. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a gauntlet. There's no doubt about it, you know. But uh, it's just, you know, it's exciting to be playing at this time of the year. You know, like I said, you want to 40-some teams that were picked to play in the postseason. You know, those other teams earned it. And uh, so have we. So now we need to go out there and play well. Are they like anybody that uh, finally? Um... 
I mean, they play fast. They, they, they average 80 possessions a game. Like I said, they led the league in scoring. They have the leading scorer in, the, in that league. And so, you, you know, you're talking about a league with UConn, Cincinnati, uh, you know, some Temple, some really good teams, you know. Um, I mean, they, they, they play fast. I think, you know, Carolina and Wake Forest were probably the two teams that we played in the league that really pushed the ball like, like, uh, like these guys do. Um, you know, some of the teams that we played early, you know, the, uh, you know, Villanova with a lot of the ball screens and their guards and stuff like that. Um, but they had great athletic ability around the basket as well with Pollard, who was a high level recruit that went to Alabama first. Um, you know, and, and uh, so they're, they're, they're really good. With basically just 40 hours to prepare for a team, how much can the guys uh, be educated on them? And really at this time of year with that much leeway, is it just really about you guys doing what you do? Well, you have to prepare as well. And we, we you know, one of the things we take pride in is our preparation. I think our guys have done a good job of being able to, you know, get the key things. Today you work on the big picture of what are the three or four big keys. And then over the next 48 hours through film sessions, individual meetings, you can't, at this time of the year, you can't do everything on the court, you know what I mean? And, and uh, but I think our guys will be well prepared, but at the same time, we need to, and one of the reasons we've been successful is our guys do a great job of preparing and they take great pride in that. But we also continue to work on what we need to do, uh, both offensively and defensively. And some of that is in preparation, some of that's just for individual improvement. When Gray comes off the bench, your defense is really going to have to be alert because he fills it up right away. He, he's, he's yeah, you have a wonderful sense for the obvious. <laughs> yeah, he's a leading scorer in the league, and he comes off the bench. He's a dynamic offensive player, can shoot the three, and can really put the ball on the floor. Uh, Dotson, for them, has been playing incredible. I think he's 23 for 31 over or something like that from the three in the last six games. Uh, their point guards are great. One of them I, I recruited uh, when I was at when I was at Dayton and Ronnie Johnson. Uh, he went to Purdue first. Unbelievable quickness and, and speed. So they got all the pieces. And you, you don't win 22 games and win 11 or 12 games in that league without being really good. And one thing is, you know, they're playing playing wise. They've proven, you know, they got upset by Tulane in the in the tournament, but they were playing for an NCAA tournament bid going into the league play, into the league tournament. Um, they didn't play uh, as difficult a schedule early because I think coach felt that they they were still kind of in the rebuilding phase. I think with some of the transfers that they got in, those guys uh, made a bigger impact in the league than maybe they originally suspected. Of course.